In one of our previous demo reels, there was a brief clip showing a parameterized window model. Since this was released, we've been asked a number of times about the best way to create this kind of object. So to answer those questions, this tips and tricks episode will look at the best way to prepare a window model and parameterize it using rail clone so that it can be easily reused in different sizes. Once we've gone through the process of creating this object, we'll also show how you can automatically fill an entire facade with windows in a single click. Once you understand how rail clone works, creating these styles is very straightforward, but actually you should only need to do it once. To create different window styles, all you need to do is swap the source geometry. There's no need to go through this full procedure every time. This tutorial starts from a single complete window object, like this. To parameterize this geometry, we need to slice the mesh into a 2D grid of separate pieces that fits back together like a jigsaw using one of Railclone's array types. So to split the geometry to fit into these inputs, we'll use a number of slice modifiers. We'll need four slice modifiers for each axis, so eight in total. For the x-axis, one for the left side, one for the right side, and one either side of the x evenly column. For the y-axis, one for the bottom, one for the top, and one either side of the y evenly row. To create these slice planes, you can follow these steps. Add a new slice modifier to the window object, and rotate the slice plane by 90 degrees on the y-axis. You then move the slice plane on the x-axis so that it's just inside the left frame. Rename this slice modifier slice left. You can then copy and paste the slice modifier and rename it slice right, and then move it so that it's just inside the right jam. Copy and paste it again, rename it slice x evenly one, and move it so that it's just to the left of the mullion, and then copy it for the fourth and final time for the x-axis, and then move it so that it's just to the right of the mullion. Now that we've created all the vertical slice planes, we can create the horizontals. Add a new slice modifier and rotate the slice plane by minus 90 degrees on the x-axis. Then move it so that it's just above the sill. Rename this slice modifier slice bottom. Copy and paste it and rename it slice top and then move it up so that it's just below the head. Duplicate it again, rename this one slice e y evenly one and then move it so that it's just below the transom and then duplicate it the final time and move it so that it's just above the transom. So you should now have eight slice modifiers as shown here. We can now toggle these on and off and change the type to create all the segments needed for the parametric window. And we'll do this a row at a time, starting with the bottom row. So set the slice bottom modifier um, to remove top. To create the bottom corners segment, set the slice left modifier to remove bottom. Once we've changed the slice modifiers to create each segment, either clone it with Ctrl and V, or you can use the snapshot tool to create a mesh copy. So to create the bottom segment, set the slice left modifier to remove top and the slice x evenly one modifier to remove bottom and create a copy. To create the x evenly bottom segment, set the slice x evenly one modifier to remove top and the slice x evenly two modifier to remove bottom and create a copy. And you keep going like this, changing the type and toggling the modifiers on and off until you've created all the pieces that you need to recreate this window. By the time you've done it, you should end up with these 12 pieces. Uh, the bottom corners, the bottom, and the X evenly bottom. The left side default and X evenly. The uh, Y evenly left, the Y evenly, and the evenly junction. And then top corners, top, and X evenly top. We understand this process can be a bit tedious, and we have a script that we use internally called Rail Clone Slicer. It allows you to create and control all the necessary slice planes from a single interface to prepare models for both 1D and 2D arrays. To use it, you just adjust the spinners to place the slice planes, and when you're done, you can click the Slice Geometry button to create and name all the individual pieces. If you'd like to try it out, you can download the Mac script file from the text version of this tutorial, or you can find out more about the script on our forum. So with the geometry prepared, we can now add them to the rail clone object. To do this, create a rectangular spline in the scene, the size of your window. Then create a new rail clone object and open the style editor. Drag a new A2S generator from the items list to the construction view. And we're going to set the size of this array using a closed spline. So you'll need to create a new spline node and wire it to the generator's clipping spline input. 
In the spline nodes properties, pick the spline created in step 1. To tell RailClone to use this spline to determine the size of the array, select the generator and turn on Extend XY Size to Area. To scale the default segments on the X axis instead of tiling them, open the properties and change the default segment mode to Scale. This will minimize the number of segments that are created. And with the array set up, we're ready to start adding some segments. So create a new segment node, go into the properties and set Alignment Z to Pivot. We'll do this to all the segments from now on to ensure that they all align correctly. Then pick the bottom corners geometry from the scene. And wire the segment to the generator's left bottom corner input. To create the corner on the opposite side, we can just add a mirror operator and wire it to the right bottom corner input. Then wire the corner segment to the mirror operator's input. Copy and paste the existing segment to save time changing the alignment mode and use it to pick the bottom geometry from the scene. Now wire this segment to the generator's bottom input. That's the bottom row done. Next we'll add the left and the right side. So duplicate the segment again and use it to pick the left side geometry from the scene, wiring it to the left input. Then we'll wire the left segment to the generator's right input via a mirror operator and then duplicate the segment one more time. Pick the default geometry and wire this to the default input. And now we'll add the top row. Paste another segment node and pick the top corners geometry. Wire this to the generator's left top corner input. And wire it to the right top corner input via a new mirror operator. You'll now have a window with a frame around the perimeter and you can adjust the size by simply editing the spline. So this is a simple window, but we want to add some divisions, starting with the mullions. To do this, we need to add start and end segments for the X evenly columns in the top and the bottom rows, but unfortunately the generator has no inputs for this purpose. Luckily, it's possible to create this effect using a selector operator and a simple expression. So to do this, create a new selector operator and wire it to the generator's X evenly input. Duplicate a segment node again and pick the X evenly top object from the scene, wiring it to the selector operator's first input. Duplicate the segment again, pick the X evenly object from the scene and wire this to the selector operator's second input. And duplicate the segment node a third time and pick the X evenly bottom object from the scene and wire this to the selector operator's third input. This selector operator has an index parameter which determines which of the segments wired to its inputs is used. If we right click on the generator and export this property, we can control which segment is used programmatically using an arithmetic node. So we'll do this, create a new arithmetic node and wire it to the selector operator's exported index input. Change the arithmetic node's operation to expression and click edit expression to open the expressions editor. We're going to create a conditional expression that uses the segment's position on the y axis of the array to change the selector node's index. This will use a conditional function if, which tests to see if the result of a boolean comparison is true. Um, and also a variable, Y spline position, which returns the current segment's position on the array on the Y axis. This position is measured from 0.0, .0 at the bottom of the array to 1.0 at the top. So using these two, we can create this expression. If open bracket Y spline position equals 0, comma 3, comma if open brackets Y spline position equals 1, comma 1, comma 2, close brackets, close brackets. And in English, this expression would read, if the current segment is at position 0 on the y-axis, output the value 3. Or, if it's at position 1, output the value 1. Else, if it's neither of these, return the value 2. You'll see there are two if functions. One is nested inside the other. Once we've written this code in the expressions editor, you just click update. And the window will now have the correct segments at the start and the end of the x evenly columns. To adjust the spacing of x evenly rows, you can use the x evenly parameter. This can be exported so that it can be accessed from the parameters rollout. So to do this, right click on the generator and click export, X evenly, X evenly distance, and then wire a new numeric node to the generator's X evenly distance input. Change the type to scene units. You can now change the spacing from the parameters rollout in the modify panel. For now, we'll use a value of 0.8 meters. To add the transoms, we use a different technique. 
Create a new sequence operator and wire it between the default segment and the generator. Create another sequence operator and wire it between the left segment and the generator. Make sure it's also before the existing mirror node. Create a third sequence operator and wire it between the X evenly segment and the existing selector operator. Set all three sequence operators to increment at Y. Next, we need to add the transom parts to the sequence operator's second inputs. So duplicate any of the segment nodes and pick the Y evenly object from the scene. Wire this to the sequence operator Y to the default input. Duplicate a segment node and pick the Y evenly left object from the scene. Wire this to the sequence operator Y to the left input. Create another segment node and pick the evenly junction object from the scene. Wire this to the sequence operator Y to the X evenly input. And we're done. If necessary, you may need to swap the order of the inputs. We're nearly there. Finally, we want to be able to control the height of the glazed sections. We'll do this using the fixed size parameter of the default, the X evenly and the left segments. To ensure they're identical and easy to adjust without opening the style editor, we'll export the values and attach a numeric node. Right click on the default segment and select export parameters, fixed size, fixed size Y, and then do the same for the X evenly and the left segments. Create a new numeric node and set the type to scene units. Wire this to the Y fixed size input we just created. You can now control the height of the glazed portion of the windows from the parameters rollout. And here's where all that hard work pays off. In this scene, there's a facade with 67 different sized windows. Also in the scene is a single spline object that consists of a rectangle for each window aperture. When you use extend XY size to area and a clipping object that consists of multiple splines, RailClone will generate a new array for each spline. This means that in each rectangle, we will get a separate unique window of the correct size. So to illustrate this, let's add our window model we just created to this facade. First, we need to rotate the rail clone object 90 degrees so that it's oriented with the z-axis perpendicular to the facade. The clipping spline is always projected along the z-axis in extend xy size to area mode. Then go to the base objects rollout and select clipping area. Assign the spline that can be found just inside the window openings. And that's it. You've just created 67 unique windows and because it's fully parametric, you can easily change the size or adjust the x evenly distance or the glazing height. Hit render and we're done. As I mentioned at the beginning, the second one of these you create should be much simpler as you already have the style set up and only really need to swap out the geometry. In the next video, we'll extend this technique and look at how to create a roller blind style with a randomized openness setting to add some lifelike variation to the windows. Meanwhile though, stay tuned for future training or for more information about many aspects of RailClone's features, please see our reference section or visit the tutorials page for more tips and tricks videos and in-depth tutorials.